Hi, it's Chris with Implied Music, and I'm back with another look at melody. And this time, we're going to try to look at at least one way to unhook, uncouple melody from conventional diatonic practice. We hear this technique a lot in film scores. We'll just do a quick dive into a little orchestral arrangement today. <music> So the past three videos have been about harmonizing a diatonic melody and using diatonic chords, chords from within a scale. Well, that means that we're always going to be working with tonic dominant relationships, that the listener's ear is going to be anchored to a certain destination, to a certain outcome. But not every composer wants to do that. In fact, I'm really interested in harmonies that don't use conventional tonic dominant relationships that float more freely. And in fact, in film composing and in epic composing, that's something that's going, going on quite a bit. So I've written a simple little ditty. We can just take a look at it on the screen. If you want to write a melody that doesn't uh, anchor itself in a single key signature, I advise you to use your intuition and just go with the flow come up with a set of pitches that is in your melody, and then move on. You're going to have plenty of time to think about it later. But for the time being, melody is like speech. It's got to feel like it's flowing out of your imagination. So here's what f f <laughs> flowed out of my imagination this morning. Well, it's a very simple binary phrase, and there are six different notes that get used in it. And I could analyze those six notes as being part of either the C major scale or the G major scale. There is no F. So uh, is it F sharp? Is it F natural? I decided I was going to analyze that and say it's a G major sound. And so a very simple texture underneath that, and you're going to see that in purple now, just supporting it. Listen to how it kind of rocks between G major and E minor. Well, to help me analyze it and to help you visualize what I'm doing, I've written the, what I think of as the tonal sets up above. So I'm thinking about this as a tonal set, the set of notes associated in my mind with this key center or tonality. Now, I was interested and I said to myself, what would those same notes sound like if I reorganized them, if I transposed them individually to fit a new key center? And well, the key center I picked was E major, and E major, C sharp minor turns out to be kind of where this lives. Now, each note needs to change a little bit. For instance, in the key of E major, G is not G, it's G sharp. There are four sharps in E major. Got to know your scales. There's one sharp in G. But the melody is still going to start on G. It's still going to go down to some kind of C, but this time it starts on G sharp and goes down to C sharp. Here's the same note names adjusted to the new center. That's spooky beautiful. And I allowed myself a little wiggle room in the texture underneath. Let's listen to them back to back. It's surprising. Much brighter to my ear. It's because the first sound, the first sound in the next one sounds minor.
that's beautiful and it'd be a great sort of color shift, especially underscoring a film. So I did one more. I thought to myself, well, I'm going to make my key center three flats, E flat major, C minor. Well, that means G goes back to G natural, but every time there's an E, it's E flat, et cetera, et cetera. The melody is the same. It's just been accommodated. The note names are the same. It's just been accommodated into the new key. This is a pretty sound too. Has a lightness. As a quick note, I'll just observe I'm using Spitfire's BBC Symphony Orchestra, and I've got um, basically a device set up with three instruments. You can hear uh, flute, oboe, and glockenspiel, giving it a little bite. And then the texture is uh, violins, I think flotando, uh, and then kind of the low instrument, uh, bassoon and uh, horn, I think horn. So... I wonder to myself, well, that's very nice when you repeat melodies like that. Your ear can accommodate and adjust to them. What if I created um, a phrase that changes rapidly between those centers? So I did that. So I've created the first sort of melodic statement in the G E minor center. The second melodic statement here you can see is in the E major C sharp minor center. The third goes to the E flat major C minor center, and then just for symmetry, back again to G. And it's surprisingly listenable. Let's listen to it. It takes a little bit of thought. Most composition is going to be a marriage of intuition and planning, of inspiration and then a certain amount of just hard work to make things fit. And the hard work is often a result of a question, what if? In this case, my question to myself was, how can I take that melody and shift it into new centers? It gives me an interesting arc. It gives me interesting opening and closing, you know, sort of like melodic energies that aren't relying on tonic dominant relationships. If you're interested in doing something like this, explore this idea. Take a simple melody that you know already, Three Blind Mice, and fit it into a new world. The, even something as simple as going into the parallel minor can blow your mind. It's just, it's a blast to try something like that. Well, I hope this has been useful and encouraging. Try it yourself. I'm very interested to hear how it works out for you. Like and subscribe. We're going to be doing maybe a little more work with melody. I, we focus on harmony a lot. And of course, chord progressions are really important. But I got to say, what drives music is melody and rhythm, right? Yeah. Okay. So, Hit that button, you'll be notified next time I post another video, but I think those of you in the know know that I try to post every day. So I'll see you next time.